Some big matchups on the baseball diamond take center stage as teams jockey for playoff positioning as we hit the home stretch. Welcome to Sportswire. I'm Will Catterley. The Godwin Eagles sure have been playing some great baseball this spring. Heading into a Friday night contest at Glen Allen, the Eagles were winners of seven straight with only two losses on the year. But it's never easy to beat the Jaguars, and making a couple of key defensive plays would prove paramount in this seesaw affair. And the offense was out and about early and often in this one as Godwin went on the road taking on Glenn Allen. Eagles only a couple losses on the season. They've been dynamite and they were getting things going on the base pass. Stolen base, top one, runner in scoring position. Good team knows what to do with that. So does Noah Berenger down the right field line, first baseline. That's good for a base hit. An RBI double, Godwin Eagles on the board. First up one, nothing, still top one. More Godwin. As the jersey gets dirty, get ready for more. Runner at third now for Sam Essex. He does his job. RBI ground out gives Godwin a 2 0 advantage. That'd be the score after one half inning of play. Bottom one. He said the bats came out to play tonight. They did for Glenn Allen as well. That dog will hunt. Elias Brooks with a base hit. Strong single to left. Jags weren't done with lead to this. Keandre Shelton had himself a ball game. That's also a base hit to left. Glenn Allen now in business. Runners on second and third. And the Jags would capitalize as well. That's a strikeout. But watch the aggressive base run. They have to throw to first to complete the out. And the runner from third comes around to score. And Brooks, it's two to one, not done. Ground ball to short. It's eaten up. A runner comes around to score. In the form of Keandre Shelton, we're all knotted up at two. Let's go to bottom two. Jags back on offense again. This time, it's a gaggle of Jaguars, a pride, if you will. And who else but Keandre Shelton, ground ball base hit. One run scores. Here comes another, he scores. A two RBI base knock. And Shelton already with three RBIs on the evening we're just getting started wasn't much defense in this game but Godwin made a couple of huge plays including this one a double play to get out of the inning which looked like it was going to be a big crooked number Glenn Allen has to settle for two that would be paramount four to two we go to the third bring out the boom stick that ball will see you next time a two run salami on the Safferwich, Bryce bringing the bat, and he equals this game at four. Bottom half of the inning, tricky, tricky Jaguars. Great bunt by the running back slash ball player, Devin Flowers. First and third runners at the corners. More small ball from Glen Allen. Suicide squeeze play, that means they bunt down the third baseline, and the runner on third breaks and comes across the score. It's 5-4 Glenn Allen. Seesaw fair continues. Let's go to the fourth. This time it's Godwin's turn, right? Well, it's been the theme all night. Why won't it change? Almost a terrific play and right, but that will work. Noah Berenger delivers once again, and Liam Deegan comes across the score. We're not at five. Later, some mistakes, critical ones by Glenn Allen in this inning. The pass ball gets by. Number 11 comes across the score, Mark Busson. And then high fly ball to deep left. Good for the sacrifice fly runner. And third comes around to score. Who else? Barringer. And Godwin has retaken the lead and looking for more. That's a little high, and that'll score another run. A big inning for the Godwin Eagles. A sapper which scores a four spot in the fourth. It's 8-5. Jags, though, not done. Check out this shot. That's a base hit. Keandre Shelton now three for three on the evening. Runners on first and second. Lead to this. Gets past second base. Run comes across the score. 8-5 is now 8-6. Glenn Allen looking to do more damage. But the defense, check it out. Line drive right at third. Throws to second for the unconventional double play. Like I said, not too much defense in this one, but Godwin made two critical plays. Let's go to the seven. Last chance, Jags. Runners on first, runners on second. Number 13 in the pitch, Josh Trent to do, and that'll do. Strikeout, looking. And then, 
intend to do. Swung on and line drive, but right at him. Glenn Allen hit the ball hard. Godwin made a couple more defensive plays than the Jags did. They escape. 8-6 is your final. Meanwhile, in ladies soccer, when it comes to playoff positioning, three teams were all in line for the number one seed heading into the final weeks. One was Deep Run, another Glenn Allen, the other Douglas Freeman. Now, Deep Run and Freeman already matched up against each other earlier in the year with Deep Run winning 1-0. Could Deep Run do it again, this time at home? And down the stretch they come, Deep Run Freeman. Two of the three teams vying for that number one spot come playoff time in 5B district playoffs. They got regionals. Anyway, we go early on, first half. Early chance for the home side. The shot, oh, just trickles off the foot. Keeper is there. Easy squeezy, lemon peasy. Freeman with the save. Deep run, though, had the majority of the opportunities early. Off the corner, keeper there for the stop, but the pressure would continue and continue to mount. Watch this, deep run, another chance shot right on net. She is there for the stop, still no score. Later, first half, however, on the throw in, check it out, it's Natalie Nettemeyer. One on one, great move. She fires, oh, it deflected off of Freeman Rebel and into the goal. She shoots, she scores. And Nettemeyer nets a big one to put deep run up one nil. So Freeman. What do they do? Well, they get their offense through Lauren Bruns normally. This time she's handing off the assist opportunity, but right to the keeper. That does not fool Hannah McLaughlin. And then the defense they played on Bruns, Deep Run would double and sometimes even triple team her. They were not going to let her be the answer. Check out the D in the first half. Very compact on Bruns. Here it is later, first half. Bruns looking for operating room. Deep run gives her none. They get the ball back on the turnover. Defense was key for deep run when it came to stopping the leading goal scorer in bronze. Chance for deep run to make it 2-0. Almost did. Still 1-0 at the half. Second half, Wildcats. Looking for a chance to make it 2. A misplay here on D. Almost does it. The shot. Oh, Nettemeyer denied. Almost two goals on the night. Now, Bruns. Doing a better job of making space and creating on her own. Here's a great opportunity for the equalizer. Oh, Freeman's D bails out. Well, Deep Run's D bails him out. And then off the corner, a chance. Rebels all of a sudden with some life. And they were turning defense and offense. Best chance of the night by far. Oh, Bruns just didn't quite get enough on it. Hannah McLaughlin gets big for the save. Freeman more chances. You do not give Lauren Brun these free kick opportunities because, oh, she usually buries that. That's so close. Still 1-0. Oh, Brun's another chance late. This one, oh, it also just barely sails high. And the deep run ladies team for the second time this season defeat Freeman for the second time by the score. One nil is your final. We head back to the diamond when we come back softball style. Hermitage looks to hold off Highland Springs while the Panthers baseball team tries to put a whooping on Maggie Walker. Highlights are straight ahead. Here's another two minute history report. When you think about wars fought here in America, there's the Civil War and of course the American Revolution. But what do you know about the one in the middle, the War of 1812? In the early years of building our nation, European countries viewed the U.S. as weak. The army was small and the navy had little respect. Great Britain was regularly declaring impressment, forcing sailors from random ships into joining their royal navy. In 1807, the USS Chesapeake was attacked by Britain's HMS Leopard near the coast of Virginia. Facing little resistance, the Leopard took four prisoners, but the incident triggered a series of embargoes between the two countries. Tensions grew when the U.S. expanded west and Britain supported the Indians. Finally, with influence from Henry Clay and John Calhoun, two warhawks from the house, James Madison declared war on Great Britain. This means war! It began with the U.S. attacking Canada, part of the British Empire, and the Brits capturing portions of Michigan. Battles on American soil and waters continued 
for the next two years. Then in August of 1814, British General Robert Ross attacked America's capital and Washington burns. Luckily, Dolly Madison, the very brave first lady, saved George Washington's portrait from the flames. Then the British launch a 25-hour attack on Fort McHenry in Baltimore. Witnessing the event, Francis Scott Key is inspired to write a poem that later becomes the famous Star Spangled Banner. Finally, the Treaty of Ghent is signed. The war ends, and neither side loses land to the other. Word traveled pretty slow in those days, and the U.S. wins the Battle of New Orleans even after peace is declared. This makes General Andrew Jackson a major pop star of the day. So here it is in a nutshell. There was a big bully off the Virginia shore, so Warhawks declared that it was time for war. There's two years of fighting with the White House in ruin. Dolly saved George and we got a new tune. No major changes, boundaries stayed the same, but one soldier won by gaining national fame. That's the War of 1812 in two minutes. Welcome back to Sportswire. How about some softball action? It's Hermitage at home. Highland Springs strike out. Got to throw to first. Oh, no. Goes to the outfield. Runner at third. Not anymore. Now she's at home. Brittany Reed scores on the strikeout. And then bases loaded still top of the first. That's a walk in an RBI. Kayla Cash cashes in. The runner comes around to score on Tanaya Henderson and then hit by a pitch. Dorothy Jackson helping her team out, so there's a third run. Island Springs Springers have a 3-0 lead top one. We go bottom one. Hermitage on the comeback trail. Oh, boy. Look out at first. Oh, collision. Don't worry. Both players would be okay. Chandler Henderson whew, running down first. Oh, and there's some runners on base. They're going to come around the score. It's 3-2 as uh, the Panthers... Getting back into it, and they would come back three to two after one inning of play. A uh, lot of base runners on board, and a lot of reasons you can move them across. It can be errors, they can be fielder's choices, they can be actual walks, hits, hit by a pitch. That case, ground uh, line drive to second ends up on the ground. Good for an RBI ground out, run scores. A couple more come around there. Now it's six to two Highland Springs, bottom two. Hermitage bring out the boomstick. That ball is. Hit in the center for a single, and Morgan Womack, is that one a charge? Panthers in business leading to this. Through the wickets at third. Chandler Henderson drives home one. Panthers back in business, and they are not done. Ball is low, gets away from the catcher. Sliding home safely is number three. Womack scores. And then that ball to second, got it. Throw to first, she don't got it. And number 11 comes across Chandler Henderson. Hermitage turning this into a big inning. It's, uh, well, it's another base hit. Another run scores. It ties things up at six apiece. Still not finished are the Panthers. That ball's low, that ball gets away again. And again, another play at the plate. And again, Hermitage is safe. Panthers scoring in all sorts of ways. That time was Rachel Berry. This ball is teed up well. Alexia Mitchell, nice play in outfield to make the catch, but it goes as an RBI sacrifice fly. Kiana Wright scores. Hermitage ahead. A slow grounder tried to barehand that one. Good idea, but can't execute it. So another run comes across the score. Panthers just won't stop batting in this inning. Nine to six, and we're just through three innings. Panthers take it, 19-11. And with that, let's go up tempo. We start on the pitch where the Tucker guys gave Godwin just their second loss of the season in a 4-2 victory. The Tigers tallied two goals in the first half and two in the second. Earl, Ramadi, Fang, and Callis each scored in the match, while Ramirez added eight saves in net. In ladies' soccer, nobody is doing it better than Glenn Allen. The Jaguars continued their hot streak, beating Prince George 8-0. They currently hold the number one spot if the playoffs were to start this week, boasting a 10-0-1 record after the victory. Glenn Allen has only allowed three goals all season. To baseball, where Deep Run completed a comeback win over Freeman, the Wildcats led in the seventh inning when Freeman stormed back to take a two-run lead. But Deep Run answered with a three-run frame themselves as Hayes Fallen played hero with a walk-off RBI hit by pitch. Deep Run won 7-6, 
and improved to 13-3 with the win. The Freeman guys' tennis team picked up an impressive victory over Cosby. The Rebels got wins in each match except from number three doubles as Cosby lost for just the second time this year. Freeman won 8-1. Back to baseball where Hermitage held off Verina in a 6-4 win. Joe Williams led the way, going 2-4, for four, scoring one run and three RBIs. That gave the Panthers their second consecutive victory. Back to baseball now. Hermitage hosted a party against the Maggie Walker firing Green Dragons, but it was Hermitage's offense firing at all cylinders. Top one already up 4-0, already a duck on the pond. Make that a Panther. He gets a third off the base hit by number 18, R.J. Bailey. Later, the double steal is on, and you gotta keep that runner at third base, right? Run comes in to score in the form of Justin Jornet, and it's 5 0. Herman is more runs where that came from. Ball gets away, it's ball four, but it goes all the way to pass the backstop. That leads to another run. 6 0. Hermitage at that point, that'd be the score after half inning of play. Hermitage is at home, but they're the away team. Go figure that one out. I also thought the game was at RFP Park. It wasn't. Go figure that one out. I don't know. Nice play defensively. Well, the umpire might have missed that one. I think he was actually safe. Maggie Walker would have some uh, business on the base paths. In the bottom of the first base hit. Good to get two runners aboard. It would lead to this, though. Nice job on the mound. Joe Williams. Joe, Joe with the fastball on the black down in the zone for the strikeout gets out of trouble. Max Moore puts Moore into this. In fact, it's the Max almost all the way to Wawa. That ball will see you next time. The pantomime celebration at home because none of his teammates are out there and now they're going to jump on him in the dugout. It's a shot for Moore and Hermitage adds to their lead. Still in the same inning. Nice piece of hitting by this lineup really throughout. That's a good clean single up the middle then. Turning on this one, Marco Santos. It's that one for a base hit. A couple runners on, Hermitage still not through. That ball is hit deep. It is far, it is caught. Great job in the outfield. Joe Williams gets robbed of an extra base hit. Runners advance, however, would lead to this. Slow roller. Maggie Walker gonna make the out at first, but it goes as an RBI ground out as number 15 comes across to score. And uh, they were off and a running. That was Max Shaw scoring. And uh, uh, just some sloppy play in the infield leading to more hermitage damage. Another run comes in there. Panthers in absolute control. And then this one line drive. I got it, I got it, I, I, I don't. I don't I ain't got it. And a run, run comes in to score. Hermitage in complete command. Now they're up double digits when this happens. That is a base hit underneath the glove. RBI single. All Panthers all evening long. Hermitage gets the best of Maggie Walker. Final score. Hermitage 17. Maggie Walker zip. We look forward to lacrosse when we return. Godwin hosts Hanover in a hard-fought match, plus top plays returns to the show. That's next. Takeout meals for just $12.99. Call it. Cherry Pearson. You are the sole surviving heir of the King of Montanopolis, and you are now worth $45 million. I'm rich. This can't be real. Of course it's not real. Come on. Having money isn't about luck. Like that takeout meal. Cook at home instead, you can save thousands a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. I adopted Bento from a shelter. But a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Well, it's a beautiful night for some guys lacrosse. Godwin playing host to Hanover. This is a pretty good... Uh, Guys lacrosse game. Hanover up 1-0 in the Rich and Creamies. Look a little bit like the Tar Heels at light blue and white. Keep your eye on the prize. It's number 25. He's going to go solo. Puts it into the back of the net. He shoots. He scores first quarter. Jack Fouts adds to the Hawks. 1-0 lead. Now it is 2-0. Hawks on the prey again. Firing. Finding the back of the net. He shoots. He scores. That time, 
Anthony Luck goes low, connects. It's a battle of birds of prey as the Eagles look to get back in this one down 3-0. They finally get a good shot here right on net. But a save and a beauty in net by Connor Bond. Still, though, here come the Eagles again. Garrett Keough trying to deliver. Keough firing. Saved by Bond. No, not James Bond. Well, third time's a charm, right? Keough, he shoots, he scores. Goal. Garrett Keough puts the Eagles on the board. The Eagles have landed. It's 3-1 to one at this point. Still in the first quarter of play, though. Just a minute or two to go. Uh, just about 30 seconds later, Hanover going to find some big-time offense. Split in the D, and then the great pass and finish. He shoots. He scores. Will Fayed scored in that one for Hanover. Finding the back of the net. Hawks up 4-1 to one after one. Let's go second quarter. Hawks looking, looking, looking for numbers. Got him. Scores again. Will fire it again. His second goal of the evening puts Hanover up 4-1. It would kind of be that kind of ball game where the Hawks just kind of kept a three-goal lead throughout until later. Eagles on a run. Still second quarter. Firing, finding the back of the net. He shoots. He scores. William Red sees Red. And attacks the keeper and scores the top 5-2. Hanover looking for the answer. Great passing would be key. But a big save in net for Mills Godwin. Himmelspach with the stop. And then Eagles on offense. Another shot and another goal for Godwin. It's the second of the night for Garrett Keough. And Eagles just down two with 3-0-1 to go in the second. But just before the half, Hawks would always have the answer. He shoots. He scores. That would make it 6-3. to three. Godwin in the second half. Cut it all the way to one, but lose it. 12-11 is your final. Time for the often imitated, never quite duplicated top plays of the month. We start at number five. We're going to go top plays April in a little bit of March. This was late, late March. Highland Springs Relays. And uh, why is this one of the top plays of the month? Well, I've never seen anything like this. Highland Springs Relays Plus, they're really good at track. Running the 4x100 Shuttle Hurdle Relays. Yeah, each member of the team is on one opposite side of the track. Each goes 100 meters, meters hence Relays, the shuttle hurdle relays. Oh, and by the way, Highland Springs also gets the win. Not only that, they nearly qualified with a state time. Number four, let's go to soccer. Boy, Tucker guys have had an interesting season. They almost beat Deep Run. They did beat Goblin. Watch this, off one hop, Luis Mendoza. He shoots, he scores. A tremendous goal for Tucker, even though Deep Run wins the match two to one. Number three, let's stay with soccer and keep your eye on number 10. Deep run taking on Glen Allen. Deep run in the white, Glen Allen in the teal, and doink! That's a header if I've ever seen one. I've seen deflections, but Josh Kirkland hits it off Glen Allen's head for the goal. Number two, everybody likes a big blast. Stigma deep run softball. Angela Sperandeo, go get yourself some. Hits a school bus in a two run homer and a winning effort against J.R. Tucker, but the best part is, they asked if I got it on video. Did you get that on video? I got it. <laughs> but number one has to go to Glenn Allen starting pitcher, Emerson Aiken, who strikes out not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight, not nine, not 10, not 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, but 20 batters on the night in defeating Prince George, and that's more than good enough for top plays of the month. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us, and you can always follow us on Twitter. I can't wait to see y'all next time on Sportswire.